Welcome to the Ladies in Conversation, Spiritually Speaking. We are delighted that you're here with us. And this evening's topic is going to be on uprooting rejection. And with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Sonia, and she's going to give us a little bit about uprooting rejection. And of course, we'll talk about it and see what happens from there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Mary. Mm -hmm. So I looked up the dictionary of uproot, and the Merriam Dictionary definition says to pull a plant and its root completely out of the ground, to remove something completely. And um, I like the synonyms of, um, well, let me start with this scripture, because mm -hmm. I think the scripture is very powerful. Mm -hmm. So in Genesis 1, chapter 27, mm -hmm. it says, so God created man in his own image, mm -hmm. in the image and likeness of God. He created him, male and female, mm -hmm. he created them. So I picked the word likeness because I wanted to, I was concerned of, is it more than just looking like you, God? Is it like your own like behavior, something else like you? Mm -hmm. So, and that's what I found. And the definition of likeness is the fact or quality of being alike. And then there's also the resemblance. Mm -hmm. But the synonyms, that's what blessed me, is agreement, relationship, and identity. Mm. Wow. So when we're dealing with the root of rejection, a lot of time the enemy wants to attack our identity. Mm. So anytime rejection comes, however it speaks to you, you're not good enough, you're not worthy, mm. you're, it's all opposite mm. of what God calls us right. to what he said about us because we're like him. Right. So, um, so when people's words and actions like attack our identity and worth in God, they go against what God says we are, like I was saying. Mm -hmm. So this is what the enemy did in the garden. So what he said was, God knows that your eyes will be open, and as soon as you eat it, you will be like God. Mm -hmm. And the trickery and that what stood out there is he said, Eve, you're going to be like God. Well, if Eve would have known better, they they walk with God, they right. talk with God. Yeah. I'm already like God. Yes. Yes. Oh, wow. I am yes. already like God. Right. So you're yes. asking me to fall into sin and do something, but I'm already like right. him. I don't need to do all that stuff. Right. And that's what that rejection does. Yes. It challenges you right. in your identity. Mm. So the enemy loves to use rejection. He wants to attack who we are. And um, he wants to keep us from fulfilling the calling and purpose of God. Mm. Yes, when we get caught up in that and not knowing our identity, we are so focused on what we think and what other people say, and it can hinder us right. mm -hmm. Absolutely. from yep. our walk of God. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at root, and I'm not trying to have a plant session or anything <laughs> like that, but it's amazing how certain words in the Bible, and if you look at the natural meaning of it, right. it's a spiritual thing too. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. with seeds, roots come from seeds. Mm -hmm. So you have to plant a seed, right? right? Okay. And so Good. in order for the roots to grow, mm -hmm. the seed has to be nourished. Right. And where right. does the seed go? In a dark place. Yeah. Right. right? right. Yes. And so when you nourish the seed, you water it and all that stuff, then here goes the roots. Mm -hmm. And then the roots, uh, well, let me say some some definitions of seeds. So some seeds for rejection could be like, like if your mom wanted to abort you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or your parents want to give you up for adoption, mm -hmm. or like, um, let's say people were saying negative things about right. you. You know, all those right. things are seeds. They're being right. planted in us. And if we're not careful, we can water them. Right. And then they grow into the root. Mm. And the purpose of the root for a plant is it'll hold up the water, it soaks up the water and the nutrients, and it keeps feeding it. Mm. And one thing that was interesting is when I read about the root, it's considered the organ of the plant. Wow. wow. So it's the main thing making the plant do whatever it has to do. Mm -hmm. And so once these seeds are sown and they continue to be fed, when we accept these lies from the enemy, right. and we look at certain circumstances in our life, and we internalize them, mm -hmm. then you got the root. Mm -hmm. And another purpose of the root is to create stability mm -hmm. and a foundation mm -hmm. for the plant. Right. So now you have these seeds, mm -hmm. these things of rejection, 
and then now you got these roots growing. And so what it's trying to do is create that stability and be the foundation. So you have a foundation of lies. Yes, right, right. yes. But God is our foundation. Yeah, Jesus yeah. is our foundation. Mm -hmm. So it goes all against that. Yeah. And so after you have the seed sown, the roots growing, mm -hmm. then what do you have? Fruit. Fruit. Mm -hmm. Fruit. Yeah. So what are some fruits of rejection? Insecurity. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fear of man. Mm -hmm. yes. Fear of failure. Fear of being rejected yes. again, yes. Mm -hmm. you know, envy, jealousy, yes. sexual yeah. promiscuity. It's so much divination. Mm -hmm. yes. There's so many fruits mm -hmm. from rejection. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so it's so big and it's so common and the enemy uses it yeah. to hinder us. And it all goes back to what does God say we are? Right. Yes. What is our identity mm -hmm. in Christ? So how do we uproot the root of rejection? Bind it up. Amen. Cast it out. We cast out that spirit of rejection. We tear down those mm. strongholds. Everything that is in our mind making us think we're not good enough. No, I can't do this. Right. God can't use me. Because I'm, I'm, my mom said I'm not good enough. I'm not going to mount up to anything. Right, right. So once you got to pull that stuff down, you know, rebuke it, renounce it, and get it out of your mm -hmm. system. Right. And you do that, you replace it. You <laughs> replace the lie or the action right. with the word of God. Right. And so you replace the lie with what God says. And the action would be like, okay, well, somebody put me up for adoption. You know, so what do you replace that action with? God's word that says, I accept you. You're accepted. When your mother and father forsake you, I take you up. Amen. 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 And so we really have to start seeing ourselves the way God sees us. We read the word. We replace each lie with the truth of who we are in Christ. And it's important that we don't receive any lies. We don't nourish mm. the seed and allow it to grow into roots. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So awesome. with that being said, awesome. yeah, we're going to take good. a short break and we'll be right back with you. Join us every Tuesday at 5 p.m. for Ladies in Conversation, Spiritually Speaking. We're going to be speaking on different topics because we know that Satan comes to steal, rob, and destroy. And the word comes to heal, deliver, free, bless, prosper, all these great and awesome, wonderful things that we should be experiencing and we should have now because we are seated in heavenly places. And when we begin to receive it by faith, and then we know that Satan's what? Satan's best? Best. Just, just not good enough. enough. Welcome back to the Ladies in Conversation, Spiritually Speaking. And our topic, of course, this evening is uprooting rejection. And with that said, we're going to turn it back over to Sonia. Well, thank you again, Pastor Mary. So I, was, I had a thought in regards to rejection. And if we can share areas of rejection that we dealt with that took us some time to get through that and, and what that looked like. Because a lot of times, like with me, because I dealt with it before I was even born, mm -hmm. you know. So with my, my mother, when she was pregnant with me, she didn't tell her mom. Mm. She didn't tell her parents. She didn't tell her family mm. for a long time. So, so it's kind of like that, yeah. I, don't, I don't want really it, want you know, this. unwanted pregnancy. Yeah. Because I really had to see, like, why do I deal so much with rejection? You know, and I had to ask and get the root of mm -hmm. what happened, what seeds were sown. So if you ladies can share what you dealt with in regards to rejection and the, the process it took, you know, it to be detailed, but the process and how long, because I still mm -hmm. deal right. with that. Mm -hmm. I'm a lot better sure. because I'm in the word of Takes God. Takes a while. Sometimes but it keeps it coming up yeah, right. sometimes and you got to tear that thing down. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, um, being rejected all my life from parents, you know, never always saying, you know, I'll never amount to nothing, this, that, and the other. I always wanted that someone that I could talk to, that I could trust, mm -hmm. you know, and I was always looking for that mother figure, mm -hmm. is what I, I did. I knew what it was later on in years um, now that what it was, but um, every time I put my faith and my trust in somebody, I would get rejected. Coming to a woman, you know, I would look at somebody, somebody would come along that was so strong and powerful and they were, they were kind and everything, and I'd look up to that person, you know, and, um, and then I would want to be just like that person. 
not really understanding that God's already made me who I am. But I, I did, wasn't, I wasn't um, strong in the Lord then. You know what I mean? Right. I, I didn't, hadn't been at that level yet. I wanted somebody to tell me how to do it, what to do it, and all like this. Right. Looking for that trust, you know, because I'd been betrayed all my life with everybody. And so rejection can cause devastation, just like you said, because rejection took me out of church for 10 years. Wow. Because I was in the church, and like I said, I was young, and... Um, and I had looked at this person, and I was like, I want to be just like that person. You know, and the person was nice to me. And, and in my mind, mm -hmm. you know, I was doing everything that I thought I needed to do so that we can be friends. And, and I'm thinking, you know, I can do this, you know, and, and all like this. But when something happened, it hurt so bad that I left the church. Mm. I left the church because really... I, I didn't know who I was. Mm -hmm. God knew who I was, mm -hmm. but I was still longing for that relationship. Sure. I was longing for that mother, for that sister, mm -hmm. that friend. And all through my life, every time I thought I had found a willing friend like that, something happened and the rejection, the hurt and everything came. But at this time, I was, I, I kind of blamed God. I said, how could you let that happen? <laughs> And we do that, you know, when mm -hmm. certain circumstances come like that. The first thing you, you say is, how could you do that? You brought that person into my life, and I thought that this was the way it's supposed to be. I thought about 10 years in a church top, different places, looking for, no, I want a church that, you know, that I can really hear the Lord. And I'm telling you, it was something that had to work out of me. Mm. He had to work out of me. He had to be my emperor. Right. He had to be. Mm. You know, and it took time for that. And God did work that out of me. What happens with rejection, uh, you start having these ill feelings that are not real. Right. You, know, uh -huh. you can be loved, and but you're rejecting yourself. Uh -huh. You're not receiving the love that's coming at you. Right. right. Well, yes. with that said, I uh, my rejection, I think it well started certainly in my mother's womb because of course you know most of you know the story you know how i got here you know she said she was raped and that's how i got here she gave me up to foster care and yeah. I went to foster care and so all through that time being in foster care uh i used to always like if my foster mother she was a, she did the best she knew how she was a good lady but times she get a little frustrated and irritated <laughs> you know the parents get with the kids but she would say something like your own mother didn't want you. And and then there would be those, like some of her relatives and stuff, when they would go places and do things, they would always say uh, something like Mamie's kids. It's always like those kids, you know, we were like, oh. we were supposed to be a part of the family, but we always knew that we were different. You know, we was like Mamie's kids oh. and foster kids. So I think that really took, started manifesting what was already happened, you know, through the birth, you know, uh, and then what made me realize that I was, you know, had the root of rejection was started drinking at the age of 16. Oh. And when I started drinking then, you know, you're dead in the pain, you're dead in the hurt, you, you get loaded and you just don't have no cares or fears or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that, you know, I just never felt wanted loved because mm. I never had that experience. And mm. I think, you know, we were, we were, bur we were, we were created in love. Yeah. Yes. So that's mm. a need, a desire and a want mm. that we all have to, to have or experience. And, and the first time I really, really, really experienced the love was from the love of God. Mm. He's, you know, love is, his, his love was a shed abroad in my heart, you know, and I knew that God loved me. It was a situation that took place, and I just just felt His warmth and His His love and His life just saturating my very soul. Oh. And what was supposed to devastate me, God was just like wrapping His arms around me. And this is after I had gotten saved and all. So, and you're right, Sonia. It does take a while to get rid of that uh, this rejection because even after I got saved, I still, you know, I had. Didn't even know I was really, God didn't really put no word to it, rejection. I just knew that 
I was kind of different. I couldn't really function a lot of times around a lot of different people because, again, you can self-sabotage yourself mm. by having ill thoughts, mm. you know, about who you are, your worthiness, even after you're born again, yes. knowing that you are fearfully yes. and wonderfully made, you're the apple of his eye, you know, and so you have to get this take that word and really replace it. And I have to keep saying it over and over and over. I'm the apple of his eye. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm, I'm beautiful in the sight of God. And you have to really start with that intimate relationship to get free from that spirit of rejection that tells you you're nothing, you're nobody, yes. nobody loves you, who cares for you, you're this, that. And you could be, you can be, it's just like a lot of times people, there's beautiful women, they get plastic surgery because they think they're, they're ugly. They're all beautiful. Yeah. Not good enough. Yeah. yeah. They reject, that's yeah. rejection in a lot of ways. So there's so many ways or you know, somebody's trying to be perfect. Yes. Yeah. That, that could be a form yes. of rejection. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be in a room with a lot of people and you just feel like you're an outsider mm -hmm. because you're rejecting yourself. It's you bring on stuff that's not even people are not even thinking like that. They're not even treating you like mm -hmm. that. They're not even doing that to you. Right. But yet mm -hmm. that spirit a rejection mm -hmm. is constantly trying to sabotage and operate and deter and defeat you and cause you to feel inadequate, less than, not worthy. But when you grow in Christ, and as you continue to grow, believe me, I don't experience rejection. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. do yeah. do what. Mm -hmm. I am not there. Mm -hmm. Jesus, because it is a, it's a, a very, mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's not an easy route to uproot because it comes in so many different ways, so many different facets. But as you continue to grow in, in the things of the Spirit of God, you'll find yourself just totally getting free. You get free from all men and know no one, nothing. Yes. To love them. Yes. Love them unconditionally with the love of God because you have taken off the old man, you put on the new man, mm -hmm. and now you operate in the nature and the character of God. And it's the nature of God that brings the promises of God, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so with that said, you know, we, do you want to end it? Oh, I, you sounded so good. <laughs> <laughs> you were ending there. I'll end it, but I can let you end it. Well, I just want to encourage you, um, wherever you're at, if you feel like, you know, you're not good enough or, you know, that you are the outcast, the, sh the, what, the black sheep, mm -hmm. that God loves you. And he created you for a purpose, something great, something miraculous that only you are capable of doing. He put something in you that no one else can do. But he said, I made you and I created you in the likeness of me. So when anything you hear, any lie from the enemy you have to cast that down and silence those lies in the name of jesus because you are beautiful you are wonderfully made in his image mm -hmm. and there's so much for you to do and all you have to do is call on the lord cast down those negative thoughts those evil words because you are beautiful you are called. Mm. You are more than enough. God said we are the mm. head and not the tail, mm. above mm. and not beneath. Mm. He said, I created you for a plan and purpose. He said, I love you. I call you my friend. I am your father. I died for you. And that is the greatest, mm. the greatest example of love like no other, that he would give his only son mm. to die for you. God said, if it was only you, I would have died for you. Mm. So just be encouraged that although it may seem like if you're dealing with this and you've been dealing with it for years, that it's okay because mm. God is with you. Mm. Don't beat yourself up. Don't be discouraged. It is a process. It is a process, but guess what? The promise is God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. The work that he started, he will finish it. Amen? Mm. So I just... Just want to bless you with those encouraging words. But that's it. We will see you next week. Same time, same place, <laughs> but with a different topic. Mm -hmm.